Hey guys, it's Craig here and welcome back to Vinyl TV. Um, today, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what's called groove pitch. Um, and groove pitch is the space between the grooves on your records. Why is this important? Well, I'm going to tell you. Uh, back in the early days of records, and they weren't made of vinyl, they were made of shellac, uh, the old 78s um, used to use the same spacing between the grooves all the way across the whole record. You can see this picture here, of a close-up of a, a, a 78 uh, RPM record, and you can see that all the grooves are spaced evenly apart. And the, the you know, because when you're cutting a record, you're basically carving sound waves into, you know, a piece of plastic. So, you know, of course the grooves that you're carving into it are gonna have, you know, they're gonna have wiggles in them. They're gonna have squiggles, as they're sometimes called. And those squiggles are what makes the stylus vibrate when you play the record back. And of course, the louder the signal going onto the record, the wider these squiggly things are going to be. And so the grooves have to be far enough apart from each other so that they don't touch each other because that's called overcutting, which means if, if two grooves actually come in contact with each other, the stylus might jump from one groove to the other and you'll have a skip. So you, they have to, the cutting engineers have to be very careful how they space the grooves apart on a record. Now, if the, if the, there's been several techniques um, since 78s to, as far as getting more, more time, recording time onto our records. And I think 78s had what, was it seven minutes? Three, three, four minutes? I can't remember the exact, it was, it was, wasn't very long. It was, you know, three and a half minutes, five minutes. I can't remember the exact time, but it wasn't very long. And because the grooves were, you know, even, even if the song was a quiet song and the grooves didn't need to be far apart because there wasn't a lot of squiggles, it was a waste of space. So what they tried to do, and they succeeded, was make it so that quieter parts of the songs have the grooves cut closer together because they don't need to be far apart, and louder parts of the songs have them cut more spaced apart. So the other thing that they've done, of course, this is a different topic, is uh, come up with an RIAA equalization curve, which basically, when you cut the records, when you cut the when you cut the lacquer, when they're actually making the records, they reduce the bass frequencies, um, so that because it's the bass frequencies that make the most squiggles, you know, and so the grooves have to be farther apart. So if they reduce the bass frequencies, then cut the grooves, um, th there's not going to be so much modulation in the grooves. And then of course, when you play the record back, you put those bass frequencies back into the into the record, and which is what the phono stage or the preamplifier does um, when you play records, but that's why you need a special preamp to play your records. So uh, it puts it back and then it, the record sounds normal. The So that's one way of making more space on the record, but the other way is also to strategically space the grooves accordingly. So um, if I get a, get a record here, I don't know if you can see, um, if you catch the light properly, uh, you might be able to see parts of the record are more shiny than others. Um, and other parts are a little rougher looking. And that's the difference between the loud and soft passages on on the record. Uh, so uh, back when uh, when we were, you know, teenagers and whatnot, and this was the format of choice, um, we used to bring these home and record them onto cassettes because it was thought that these wear out quickly, which isn't really true on a properly set up turntable, but we didn't know. And of course, every time you pull them out, the jacket, they get an extra pop and a click on them or whatever. So we used to bring them home and record them onto cassette and then put them away and listen to the cassette. And if the cassette got damaged or wore out, then we would make another copy. So the records were, they got preserved, you know? And when you did that, you had to, look the the thing what we did was we looked at the record looked at it and said well where's the loudest part on the record because when you're recording onto cassette you have to set the recording levels um so that you know it is loud enough but it won't be too loud that it'll go into the red and distort so you know in order to do that you looked for the loudest 
part of the record, the loudest song or the loudest piece. And you do that by looking at the grooves and going, oh, look at that, that's loud. Right there is really loud. Right there is really soft. We don't want to use that part. Um, let's see, uh, that song looks like it's loud there. So you'd, you'd drop the stylus down into the loudest song and then you'd set your levels and then you were good to go. So, and that's, that's really what you're seeing when you look at a vinyl record is that you're seeing the different loudnesses and softnesses of the music, not only because the grooves have more information in them in the louder parts, but also because they're spaced apart more. Um, and in the softer passages, or the grooves are put tighter together. So they got this figured out. And it's interesting how they did it because, um, well, first of all, let's take a look at um, a few examples of this. Okay, so let's take a look at some typical record grooves here. Um, of course, it's all one groove going from the beginning of the record to the end. But, uh, you know, we often call them grooves because we don't see them as one continuous groove when we look at them. Um, but anyway, here's here's a, an example of a rock album that has uh, the grooves spaced apart accordingly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it. This is a live, this is a video here we're going to do. And as it gets toward the end of the song, you can see when the song ends, the grooves move very close together. Um, now, those little white specks that you're seeing inside the grooves, those aren't dirt. Those are actually... Uh, reflections off of the light that I'm using um, to do this. Inside the grooves, records are very shiny, very, very smooth. And even inside the grooves, it's a very smooth surface, which, you know, it has to be in order to create a, a, a you know, a, a quiet uh, sound, you know, so there's no background noise. So they have to be smooth. So that's what those white things are seeing here. A lot of them, a lot of it is dirt, but some of it is just the reflections off of the side, the wall of the groove there. Um, so here is in between the song, in between the songs, and this is where the new song starts, and it's very quiet at the beginning. As you can see, just slight vibrations there, slight squiggles as they're often called in the grooves. Very, very hard to see. You can see where on some parts the grooves get spaced apart a little bit more starting more, more so here. Again, you're going to see a lot of dirt. This isn't this is not a new record. And as we move up, we can see the grooves getting further and further apart as the song gets louder. And that's how this all works. Let's just move up a little more. I know there was one up here, a really wide groove, a really vibrating. See, there's a lot of action going on there. Look at that. Look at that. Those are that's Getty Lee's bass, because <laughs> this is a Rush album. Um, so yeah, those big wide squiggles there, those are the low frequencies. And the tiny little white squiggles in there, you see there are higher frequencies, and so on. Song gets quieter here, grooves get closer together. And narrower, because there's no not a lot of low frequencies. You see? That's how that works. And then we're going to get further apart again up here and so on. Now what we have here is a 12 inch single and so that's when they put like one song say maybe an extended version of a song on a 12 inch record. So for that reason they don't need a lot of time, recording time on the record. So they just space the grooves as far apart as they can. And you can see as I move the record along here, there's absolutely no reason why these grooves need to be this far apart other than that they just don't need to be close together because the song isn't more than seven minutes long. And of course, there's lots of recording time on more recording time than seven minutes on the side of a LP. So they just go ahead and omit the whole groove spacing thing and just space them far apart. Here's a record that was pressed in the early 1960s. It happens to be Meet the Beatles. And yes, I'm being very careful with it. And you can see the groove pitch there. And as I move the record towards the end of the song, lost my lighting there for a sec. There we go. Um, as the song fades out, 
to see the grooves don't get any closer together. So perhaps they weren't using or changing the groove pitch at this point in, uh, in vinyl pressing. You know, it's really cool to look at things under a microscope, especially records. Um, I've learned a lot about how records are made just by looking at them. And I have a, this is what I used to take those videos. Uh, this is a little USB microscope. It's very simple. Let's see, what do we got? Where's the box? This is the box. You know, I got it off of Amazon. It was 30 bucks or something. It wasn't, it wasn't expensive at all. It's well worth it. Um, and then I, I bought the stand separately. This, it doesn't come with the stand. Um, the stand is, it really makes it much easier to use the, uh, to use the microscope. You put the record on there, you know, you clean it off, make sure you're careful, and then you, you focus it in and dial it in, and it's really, really cool. So, um, that's what I used to do that. And I, I kind of, you know, if you're, you know, one of those people who likes to look at things and likes to learn stuff like that, then I recommend you get one of those things and have a go at it. So anyway, um, so how'd they do this? Because how do they know if, if the guy, if the cutting engineer is in there and he's cutting a record and he's, you know, he hasn't heard it before or he's maybe heard it once or twice, you know, as he was setting it up, how does he know there's going to be a loud part of the song coming up? You know, um, that's the thing. You'd have to, you'd have to know ahead of time because you'd need to space the grooves farther apart before that loud passage comes up. Um, otherwise, you know, you're going to get that problem with uh, grooves touching. So it was really kind of cool the way they started to do it. And maybe at first, you know, they just had somebody who like knew the record really well and he, he made adjustments as it went along. But eventually what they did is they had a special tape machine. And this thing has two heads. It's got one head for playback for the actual cutting of the uh, audio on the grooves. And it's got another head it's called a preview head. And this is the head that tells the cutting engineer or whatever, If now it's computerized, of course, it's been computerized for a few decades. Um, it tells the cutting head how far apart to space the grooves. So you can see on this crazy looking tape machine that the tape goes around all kinds of crazy spools and things like that. And goes it goes past the first head, which is here, and that's the preview head. And then it goes around all these spools and everything until it makes it to the playback head. So the time it takes for the tape to get from the first head to the playback head, which is actually the head that actually cuts the information into the grooves, is the same time as one revolution of a record. So they've got this figured out. The first head tells the machine, okay, we got a loud part coming up get these grooves spaced apart. And then the second head actually cuts the information into the grooves. Now, of course, after a while, uh, and of course nowadays too, they, you, you know, we use computers to do it. And so the computer will have, you know, two outputs. One will have the preview, which tells the lathe when to space the grooves closer to, together or farther apart. And, it, and then of course it's got the other output, which actually cuts the information into the grooves. So, you know, if you have um, a record that's got a lot of quiet parts in it, like for instance, um, well, I, I'm thinking of like Super Tramp, um, even in the quietest moments, which I, I love that record. It's so good. Um, there's a lot of quiet songs in there and even like um, Fool's Overture, which is the last song on side B, has a lot of very quiet parts in it. So that allows them to record more time onto a record. Some some um, orchestra, um, classical records, have a lot of very quiet passages in them. And so you'd be able to fit more time on a record with that. But on, this, on the other hand, if you're cutting a record that has, you know, that's like rock music or, you know, heavy metal or, you know, hip hop or something with a lot of bass or a lot of, you know, that's not generally very quiet, then you're not going to get as much time on the record. But they maximize the amount of time on the record by variably adjusting the pitch between the grooves. Hope that, I hope you found this interesting. And I have much more stuff coming up. I want to talk about tape biasing. What is that? How does it work? What, is it, what do you mean by 
what's the CRO2, metal, you know, normal. What's the difference between those? And what does it actually do to the recording uh, to improve the sound? And of course, there's noise reduction as well and stuff like that, too, we can talk about. So anyway, that's it for me for today. And thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to pick up one of my one of my shirts here. It's tgtshirts.com. Look on the right hand side of the of the page. You'll see a link called Craig Tube. That's my other YouTube channel, by the way. And go in there and you can you can buy one of these nice shirts and uh, so help support the efforts that I make to do these videos for you. So thanks a lot for that. And we'll see you real soon here on Vinyl TV. Keep spinning those records because vinyl is final. Cheers.